This is my last day in Bagan. Tomorrow morning uh, at 5.30 in the morning, I'll be on a boat heading up the Irrawaddy River to Mandalay. I'm going to spend a couple of days there and then I'm fly my visa is expiring again and I'm flying to uh, Kuala Lumpur from uh, Mandalay. And I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen after that, but we'll find out. Today I don't have a lot of big plans. I'm going to rent an e-bike again because I just like to have a way of getting around on my own. And I think I'm going to go to the Bagan Viewing Tower, which I think is called the Nan Mayint Tower, something like that. It was built in 2005. It's about 12 stories high to get to the rooftop viewing area. It also has a, like a restaurant below that. And I guess it's a very popular place to go for sunset and sunrise viewing. And perhaps if I were a smart tourist, I would have gone there for either a sunrise or a sunset. Now, I've read a lot of very critical reviews of this tower. People call it an eyesore. People call it a commercial money grab. There's all kinds of criticism of it. And people who go for the sunrise or sunset also complain about how crowded it is. It takes a long time to get up on the elevator because so many tourists go up there and they've all got these giant cameras with huge lenses and people are bumping into each other and fighting for the perfect vantage point. But this is kind of the middle of the morning, so I'm hoping it won't be that crowded. And it's also the low season here in Bagan, so maybe it won't be uh, crowded either because it's the low season. In any event, I love to get up high wherever I am just to get a view. If I had a drone, you know, I'd send that up but I don't have a drone. I don't even know what the drone laws are here, whether you're allowed to fly them or not. Not sure. Step one, get my e-bike, and then uh, we're going to try and find this uh, viewing tower and see if it is as much of an eyesore as people say it is. I can't imagine how ugly it could be, but uh, we'll go uh, check it out. And hopefully they have uh, an e-bike waiting for me. Okay, all set. Got my e-bike, 6,000 chats again for the day. It's about $4 US. And to my surprise, my regular spot was again rented out. They had three, maybe four bikes sitting there, um, but for whatever reason, they weren't available. Maybe they were reserved. One of them seemed to be charging the battery, so it wasn't ready to go. But it didn't seem to matter. They're all connected here with smartphones, of course. So the guy just got on his phone, called a friend of his who operates another business. This one is apparently called, it's called the Bagan Twilight Information Booth. And I have bike number seven from them. It's a bit more, a uh, bit older, a bit more beat up than the this guy's. And I've noticed that the brakes uh, squeak a lot when you, when you use them, but it's no big deal. Um, I tend not to go very far when I rent one of these just uh, in this area. It's not like I'm going on big expeditions, so it does not have to be in perfect condition or, uh, yeah, like I said, I just go a few kilometers. All right. Let's uh, see if we can find this uh, viewing tower. Oh, I got some Bagan puppy dogs going by. Pack of three. Uh, actually, it might be mother and two youngish puppies not sure and we're off to the viewing tower got the gopro mounted on the scooter again there's my squeaking brakes and there's no sound when i use the uh, turn signal on this one either so you have to remember that you've uh, set the turn signal you have to remember to turn it off afterwards Back on the main drag. So 
the one with. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. Car nearly ran right into me. I thought maybe I was turning onto a one-way street or something. Yeah, time for a map check. I know I have to turn left down one of these side roads, but I'm not sure which one it is. And we're not there yet. Still uh, up ahead on the left. <laughs> the rear view mirror on this bike is a bit of a pain because it won't stay in position every time I adjust it so that I can see behind me. It just vibrates out of position again. And following up on my discussion from the other day, I believe it, were, it was structures like this viewing tower that were kind of a sticking point for Bagan getting the uh, World Heritage designation from UNESCO. They don't like structures like this. And I keep hearing this idea that they don't like them because they're right inside the archaeological zone. But I'm not sure I quite understand that because this whole area is an archaeological zone. I mean, you can't go anywhere without seeing the pagodas and the temples. My hotel, my guest house is in the archaeological zone. Everything is inside the archaeological zone. And in fact, this tower seems to be located quite far from you know, new Bagan and old Bagan. So, I'm not really sure what the problem is with its uh, location. I'm wondering whether I'm chasing a ghost road because I'm not seeing anything out here that uh, matches what I'm seeing on my map. I feel like I've overshot the road by quite a bit and yet I didn't see anything there. I might have found my road, at least that's the only road I've seen. I think I keep feeling a little bit lost because in my head I feel like I'm in a very small place, you know, almost like a village setting. And yet when I get out into Bagan, I find the uh, distances are much further than, uh, than I anticipate. No, this is not the road I want. to turn around and go back and uh, see if I can uh, find it. Could be that I can't access it from this direction. Maybe I have to uh, turn around or, or head out towards the airport. I think there's another access road from that direction. Seems like a far distance to go though to get there. Another map check. Perhaps I'm not really looking for a road but a trail because we have a trail right here and I think I'm in more or less the right area. It's supposed to be less than a hundred meters ahead of me. So zeroing in. <laughs> Yeah, this e-bike, despite looking older and a bit more beat up, actually is more responsive than the other ones I've had. And it has a higher top speed. Not that we're talking about anything major. We're up at uh, 64, 65 kilometers an hour now. And that looks to be uh, top speed. Uh, I see another trail. And though this trail doesn't look like much, <laughs> this has to be the right one. All right, at long last, I think I found the trail. I had to stop for a minute here to change the battery in the GoPro and change the memory card. As much as I enjoy using the GoPro, there's certainly a lot of uh, 
aspects to it that are not that great. I mean, the battery barely seems to last at all. I'm constantly changing batteries. I go through three or four of them in an easy day of uh, taking video. And as I said the other day, it, it freezes up on me all the time. So every time I do change the battery, the first time I try to turn it on, it uh, won't turn on. Well, I don't think this is the, uh, <laughs> the way that most people would go to this place. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I try to turn it on after changing the battery, it just freezes and I have to pull the battery out two or three times and keep reinserting it just to get the GoPro to turn on, which is a real bummer. And on top of that, I do find the memory card really hard to get in and out. You pretty much have to remove the battery in order to get the memory card out. It's a very difficult to get at it unless you do remove the battery. Well, I don't think we're <laughs> going much further. <sighs> What's going on? Dead end in a farmer's field. So this is not how you get to the viewing tower. Oh, I think I can see it just over there. I recognize it from some pictures and that's where I'm trying to go. But I'm not gonna get there this way. Ah, yeah, now my foot is all scratched up because of uh, going down this trail. There's so many thorns. I got my uh, foot stuck in a thorn bush, got it all cut up. And the other real problem with the GoPro is when you have to change the battery so often and change the memory card so often and it freezes up so often, so you have to pull out the battery, every time you do that, you have to remove it from its cage because that's the only way to get access to the battery compartment. And the cage, it's really hard getting this unit out of the cage and then back in again. It's a whole big procedure. So it's not the most convenient camera to use. Anyway, let's... Uh, backtrack here and I guess I have to go out to the airport road and approach it from that direction trails are kind of fun but I do get nervous about getting a flat tire because there are so many thorns here and uh, yeah flat tire would just kind of ruin your day you know I guess I'd have to call them and they'd have to come get me Whoa. deep sand deep sand hard to keep your uh, wheel straight Back to the road, and off we go. <laughs> Small detour there. All right, we're out on the main road heading out to the airport. And if I'm uh, trusting my map again, I have to head this way until I get to quite a large intersection, turn right. And then I should be able to uh, work my way towards the viewing tower. It's actually at the tip of a large golf club, uh, golf course. And I believe the golf course was also a problem as far as development in this area is concerned. Uh, that when it was built, you know, it was, it was approved and built without a problem. But then when it came time to get the World Heritage status, they looked at that golf course and thought it wasn't appropriate for this area. 
important, as I hinted at earlier, I think it'd be very difficult to set up rules and regulations about this just because this archaeological zone is so large in area and it's also so mixed in with villages and houses and the river and all that kind of stuff. So I'm thinking back to my visit to Angkor Wat in Cambodia. All of the development is in the town of Siem Reap and then the temples are in a big clustered area you know, 15 kilometers or so outside of the town. And if I remember right, there's nothing in the temple area itself. Like there are no hotels embedded inside the temples like they are here. But it also has a very different geography, I think. Man, as I said, the distances are much greater here than I keep thinking. I thought I was just a hundred meters away from the intersection, but it's much further away than I thought. It's got to be up here somewhere. I had no idea it was on the other side of this big sign, the Welcome to Bagan Archway. What is going on? My map check tells me that I'm I'm on the right path. But man, this seems like a roundabout way of getting to this viewing tower. I have to pretty much go back to the airport to get to it. the slowest corner in history. Uh, again, I find it different from driving a motorized scooter. For some reason, I have a tendency to let up off the accelerator on this e-bike. And I didn't usually do that on the scooter. This area feels much more desolate than I thought it would brown scrub grass everywhere. These roads, you know, completely empty. Especially since I, I understand it to be the rainy season. Oh, and there's a sign. Three kilometers. Ideal one-stop viewpoint for visitors to Bagan. Meeting rooms, bar and cafe, souvenir shop. A bit confusing, the sign though, because it has an arrow pointing to the left, which is uh, off in uh, you know, that direction. There's a road going there, but I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to go straight. So the arrow should be pointing that direction. So maybe uh, I'm heading off in the wrong direction again. <laughs> we'll find out. Oh, I can even, I can see it right ahead of me. So that arrow is kind of pointing in a confusing direction. From here, I mean, I'm no judge of artistic merit, but to me, it doesn't look like such an eyesore. I was expecting to see something much uglier than that. It's basically a tower and even the top of the roof, the roof line seems to uh, look a little bit like the temples in this area. I mean, it looks like they made some kind of an attempt to make it look like an authentic, you know, Bagan structure. I can't say the same for this sign though. The sign definitely has a uh, tourist trap atmosphere about it. Oh. 
bumpy road. <laughs> yeah, their signs could definitely be improved. They had that one sign with an arrow that was pointing in the wrong direction. And then they have a couple more signs that have no arrows at all. But not entirely. Oh yeah, there's the entrance there. Because this is the entrance to this big uh, resort up ahead. I think which is connected with the uh, golf course. It's a much uh, larger structure than I expected. I have to point my uh, GoPro up a little bit to take it all in. Yeah, it's not the most beautiful thing I've seen in the world that outside of the tower, just that smooth brown. Looks like a cheap uh, apartment building. But the rooftop, you know, looks like the top of a temple. And the bottom section has a bit of a temple pagoda feeling to it. There's nobody here. There isn't a single vehicle in the uh, parking lot. Is the place even open? <laughs> Let's go Let's see where, where I can park. And there it is. Parked my e-bike out here in this vast, empty parking lot. When I looked at their uh, listing somewhere, it was on a website of some kind, the hours for Monday seemed very different from every other day of the week. Every other day it said it was open 24 hours a day. And on Monday, it first said closed and opens at noon and then it had hours of like 5 a.m. to 9 and it was just a weird selection of hours i'm not quite sure what they were talking about so i wondered at first whether they'd even be open today well we're about to find out Hello. Is it open? Yes, open. Oh, okay. You the ticket. ticket here. Ticket yep. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. And in chat? Seven thousand seven hundred. Seven thousand seven hundred. And you need to see my pass? They check in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, they check the this ticket. And this ticket is only Kura and Tanda. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I have my ticket. The entrance fee is five dollars US and they calculated out to about 7,700 uh, chats. So, in I go, all by myself. Thank you. Okay. Reception. Thank you. Ah, no, thank you. Okay. Mm. Yeah, a very nice uh, lobby area here. Very comfortable chairs. I'm just going to look out the window for a second. Check out these uh, lounge chairs. Ah, 
Oh, that's nice. Even from here. This is the nicest view of the Bagan area I've had since I arrived. That's the one thing, you're always at ground level and you never get to see anything. I didn't even know that there were a row of uh, hills in the background there. I wonder if, uh, how, how close they are, if you can even... Uh, I think they're across the river though. Hmm. Oh, tower, tower puppy. Hey puppy. Hey hello, up here. <laughs> he doesn't know, doesn't know where I am. And they have a large souvenir shop. Oh, arts and crafts. And if I had a home somewhere and I was heading home after this trip, you could uh, pick up something here. <clears throat> open viewing deck. Yeah. Okay. There is the 11th floor. 11th floor and that as well. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Oh, here I am in the uh, elevator heading up, feeling very fancy. So I guess you can take the elevator up to the 11th floor, and then from there you can climb the stairs up to the uh, 12th floor. And that's the open viewing deck. And that's, of course, what I'm uh, most interested in. Ah, look at that. Oh, there's the uh, stairs up to the viewpoint. And then they have uh, this enclosed viewpoint here. Hello. Oh, they're not running the uh, air conditioner today. I guess there just aren't enough people to uh, justify it. It's pretty hot in here. And I'm guessing that this is the uh, fancy resort down there connected with the uh, golf course. It was called a, a room resort or something like that. There's the Irrawaddy River in the distance. Anyway, let's uh, let's climb the stairs up to the open viewing deck. I think it'll be a lot nicer up there. I have to find it now. I don't know where it is, where the stairway is. There we are. Yeah, a spiral staircase. And they have uh, hand grips here to make sure you don't fall. Yeah, that's very cool. Avoid a fall. Use handrails. That's good advice. Ah, this is nice. This is much better. Got that real strong wind blowing through. recognize that uh, line of hills over there. I remember passing by them on the uh, train and I think that's where 
this very uh, interesting pagoda called Mount Popa is located. I think there's a sign for it here. Yeah, here it is here. Mount Papa or Mount Popa. And I guess it's uh, off in that direction somewhere. I honestly had no idea it was so flat in this area. It's like a yeah, flat plain, like prairie land almost. I expected more rolling hills and that kind of thing. And here's a sign for the Schwezigon Stupa. Ah, and there it is right there. Might be hard to see with the wide angle of the GoPro, but uh, just ahead of me there is the golden dome, the Stupa of uh, Schwezigon, which means that my guest house is located right over there somewhere. Um, it's not far from the river. I can't come up with the names of all these places off the uh, top of my head, but I recognize the shape of all these different um, pagodas and temples that I visited over the last few days. Each one has quite a distinct uh, look at the top. They're all quite different. And all the larger ones really dominate the uh, countryside. They really dominate the landscape. area still has a feeling to me of almost a ghost town like even this uh, fancy resort right below me I've been looking all over it and I don't see or I haven't seen a single person anywhere so low season really does mean low season and as I said when I read the uh, reviews of this place they talked about how There'd be so many people up here with their cameras. It'd be very crowded for sunrise and sunset. And I can't imagine how that could be, though, because it's actually quite a wide uh, space up here. But I guess if you're looking at where the sun rises or sets, it's only on one side. So everybody crowds over to one side. Ah, powerful wind. Here is a uh, photograph of the Sulamani and Damayangi temple. I believe this one is Sulamani. Perhaps this one is Damayangi. And uh, that's where I went yesterday. And uh, you can see them off in uh, that direction, quite far away. <laughs> Again, I'm not quite sure what all the hubbub was about, about this uh, observation tower being such an eyesore. In a way, it seems to be at a very respectful distance from the main temples. I mean, these are all the main temples and pagodas there off in the distance. And if the tower, I mean, to be honest, we're viewing this area, if the tower was located right in the middle of that, that would be much more much nicer spot for the tower to be in order to get nice views of the area, this, the river, the temples. And me personally, I wouldn't have a problem with the tower being situated right in there as long as it was done respectfully and looked nice. So I guess I don't have uh, strong feelings about this sort of thing. And I love to get up high. And especially now that you're not allowed to climb up to the tops of any of the pagodas, you can't really get a view of the area at all. I've been here for three days, I guess, and I still had no sense that I'd seen the area because I never managed to get up above it and get a look around. Till now, that is. I really like the view from this side. It's a really nice small uh, pagodas here with the farmer's field around it and off in the distance so many more pagodas. Very 
windy day though, especially on this side, that's where the wind is coming from the strongest. I've noticed there's quite a few, well not a few, there's five or six uh, local tourists here and uh, I've noticed the Myanmar women are having a hard time because the fashion here is to have long, your hair grown out very long and with this wind their hair is just blowing all over the place. They can't control it. So they can't stay out here for very long. And they have a wooden platform here in the, uh, in the middle. And right from here in the center, you can actually look uh, all the way around in uh, 360 degrees. And they did a nice job up here. I think everything is made out of wood. It's all exposed wood. So even, even the handrails are made of wood. It's not made of a steel or aluminum or anything like that. <laughs> you can see even here the banisters for the stairs going down. Big thick pieces of wood. Time to go down the stairs. You can imagine these stairs could be a real bottleneck if it was a busy sunset viewing time in the high season. Only one person at a time could go up or down. Looking, I'm looking very wind blown from my time on the outer deck. Saying goodbye to the Bagan viewing tower. I read online that your ticket entitles you to multiple visits, at least two in a day. So you could go to see the uh, sunrise and then return for sunset or come midday like I'd have and then come back for sunset. At least that's what I read. I don't know if it's uh, actually uh, true or not. So oh, there it is there. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was a uh, well worth the visit, I thought. I'm glad I uh, tracked it down on my last day here in Bagan. I don't have any uh, other plans for the day, to be honest. All I really wanted to do was go up into the uh, tower. And I don't have any particular pagodas or temples picked out to visit today. So I think I'm just going to take my e-bike and drive a little bit through some of the back streets of Nyang U and maybe uh, Old Bagan. See if I can get down near the river and just sort of drive around a little bit since I have the e-bike. And uh, if I come across anything special that I want to check out, I can always hop off and take a look inside. But I think I'm just going to go driving around.
I'm back on the rooftop of my guest house now here in uh, Bagan. I really like the people that run this guest house. They keep a freezer behind the front desk and they keep it stocked to the roof, to the top with bottles of water, which you get nice and ice cold. Sometimes there's blocks of ice floating in them. And every time I come back from exploring uh, the Bagan archeological zone or whatever I'm doing, they pop up out of their chair and offer me an ice cold bottle of water every time I come back. It's amazing. It's keeping me going here. <laughs> so this morning, that was my uh, visit to the uh, Bagan viewing tower. And despite a lot of the uh, negative reviews that I've come across about this place, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it really added a nice uh, element to my trip to Bagan to be able to get up high and, and look out over the area kind of gave me that perspective that I feel like I've been lacking so far where all I've been doing is driving around at ground level and never been able to go up into any of the pagodas to get a look around so yeah I really enjoyed that so that might be it for my uh, visit to Bagan this time um, after my climb up the tower I got on my e-bike and I drove around a lot of the back streets and down to the river and exploring all the you know, the small areas, the, the village, uh, local neighborhoods of uh, Bagan and uh, Nyong U. And I recorded some of that on the GoPro. I don't know if I'll put that any of that in the video or not, but uh, that's what I've been doing for most of the day. I didn't go to see any more of the major uh, pagodas or temples. I'll have to, if I missed out on any, I'll have to come back and see them on a, uh, another trip. So tomorrow morning, bright and early, I'm on the boat heading to Mandalay and uh, soon after that, a flight to Kuala Lumpur. So the next video should be from the boat on the Arawadi River. And I'll see you in that video.